York. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio, uh, this time coming to you from CBS Broadcast Center in New York City. I was here and I uh, saw the Super Bowl. With my family, and I must say that uh, it was an amazing game. There's no doubt it was an amazing game. But can I just say this? I have had the misfortune of tuning into the sports radio stations in New York, and there's a couple of them, which is just one illiterate yutz after another. I mean, I, I cannot believe what passes for radio in New York City. I can't believe it. And what I especially can't believe... No, let's start with what I saw last night here. Last night, after the Super Bowl was over, all of the local TV stations had cameras. And by the way, I know they do this in L.A. and other places, but nowhere is it as obnoxious and unwatchable as New York. Who did the research that says that people want to watch other morons on television acting like drunken fools? I mean, first of all, here in New York City, they've got this idea, not only do they have this delusion that this is the center of the universe... That everything emanates from here, nothing else is good outside of here, it's all from here, that's it. But also, uh, TV shows produced here somehow think that the rest of the country needs to see a backdrop of the streets of Manhattan. CNN makes you look at Columbus Circle. CBS makes you look at uh, the area outside the GM building on 5th Avenue. ABC and ESPN make you look at the traffic of Times Square. And NBC, whether it's the Today Show or any number of other shows, makes you look at Rockefeller Center, and they somehow think the rest of the country is fascinated with seeing all those, those maroons, all those morons out there, with their signs, hi, mom, and all this other nonsense. People waving, people acting like idiots, acting like crazy people. So it starts with that. Why would anybody want to see that? All right, so it starts with that. Last night after the Super Bowl was over, all the local TV stations had cameras stationed at various bars where people have been drinking, presumably... For six, seven, eight hours. And, of course, the Giants were the underdog in this game. They were not expected to win the Super Bowl yesterday. So you have all these people who I guarantee you were calling the same sports radio stations I was talking about, uh, calling for the firing of the coach of the Giants, Tom Coughlin, or calling for uh, Eli Manning, the quarterback, to be traded, or saying the Giants stink about four months ago. Now all these people are drunk and they are on live television. We always knew we could do it. We always knew we could do it. Hey, Bob! Hey, what? The Giants won! Like, this was the news, okay? The news. So it was a mix of, of, of crowds of drunken morons. Of course, the, the ABC station here in New York... Channel 7 in, in New York City, 
uh, they had to get a plug-in for the ESPN Zone, which is owned by the Walt Disney Company, as is Channel 7. So they've got somebody stationed at the ESPN Zone in Times Square to get their promotion for the ESPN Zone. Just like Channel 7 in L.A. does that, by the way. And uh, sure enough, Times Square, midnight, drunken morons. But let's get the plug-in for ESPN. So they've got some woman reporting from the air and a bunch of people making obscene gestures behind her and screaming like nuts. Then you, then you look later on in the same broadcast, they've got some poor schlep, the reporter who got to cover the sports bar in Hasbrook Heights, New Jersey, where, of course, I'm sure the DUI patrol is out in force. So by the time they get to this person, there's like six people in the bar. There's nobody there. I'm standing here from hours ago, the New York Judge. I mean, and then the, the, the few alcoholics who are still left there. <laughs> then on top of that, the TV stations, especially Channel 7, which has the ESPN zone in Times Square. And if, you know, you need to imbibe, why not stop by Walt Disney Company's ESPN zone? It's right there in Times Square. Now Channel 7 has helicopters with cameras aimed down at Times Square saying, here's what they said. It looked to me like about a 100 people standing out in the street. And they said the following. People are already starting to gather. Now, the reality is, at any given time, there's at least a 100 people in the street at Times Square. So what? By Channel 7 going on saying people are already starting to gather, what they were really saying here in New York was... Come on down, everybody. Come on down and act like drunken idiots. There'll be thousands of you so we can show you on TV. And don't forget the ESPN zone, by the way, located right in Times Square. That's the ESPN zone. Don't forget about that. So you had that. And, and literally, I'm not kidding. About an hour and 45 minutes of every TV station in New York City with live shots of drunken, blithering, slimy morons. Every putz and yutz, every drunken moron, every, oh my God, you wouldn't believe what I was seeing. And they put this on the news. This was the news coverage. None of these people have ever played a down of football in their lives, and they had no business commenting on anything. And why are they on the news? Why is this news? I don't know. You know, if you want on the news, you want to see the Giants with the Super Bowl, here's the highlights of the game. Eli Manning's the MVP. Here he is receiving the award. That's fine. But the reporting on the drunken idiots who are out there getting plowed and putting them live on the news. When did this become news? And then, folks, and we all know that outside of New York City, very few people in the United States of America love New York City, except the usual putzes who call it on our show from L.A. going, Hey, I just got out here. You guys ain't got no culture out here. So today, they've got these sports radio stations take, first of all, hours of going over every, every millisecond of the game, everything that happened, one illiterate moron after another. And those are just the hosts of the show. Forget the callers. And the topic of the show is, well, there really is no topic. Let's go to the phones. Hey, first time caller. I just wanted to say, go Giants. That was a great game. Don't you think? Oh, yeah, it was a great game. Don't you? Yeah, it was a great. All right, let's go to our next call. Hello, you're on the air. Hey, I love your show. I listen all the time. Hey, the Giants. I was, wow. Uh, nobody thought we could do it, but we did. I mean, I'm telling you. That's what the radio sounded like all day here in New York City. It is unlistenable. And I just want to say this. I enjoyed the game. It was a great Super Bowl game. It was fun to watch it with my family. I enjoyed it. But that's it. I didn't play. I didn't participate. I had nothing to do with the outcome of the game, except I sat in a nice warm den somewhere with a big screen TV and a beautiful view of the game, and ate some hot wings and watched the game. That's what I did. That's it. 
But you hear these people calling radio programs and walking around the streets and acting like they had something to do with this. Stop being such morons, okay? It's just the Super Bowl. It's just a game. All right, so what? New York Giants won. Last year, the Indianapolis Colts won, and no doubt next year somebody else is going to win. What does this prove? The fact that the New York Giants won the Super Bowl, what does this prove? They had to have a champion. They played a good game on one particular day, and they won a few games during the season, and it was good. But is it really a life-changing experience, and did anyone really have anything to do with this? I mean, did you have to be with any insufferable people to watch the Super Bowl? Like, did you have to be with any people from the East Coast, whether they be from uh, New England or whether they be from New York City? Did you have to sit with any of the people I'm talking about? You know, I mean, now that I've described them, do you know the kind of people I'm talking about? Did you have to spend any time with people like that? Did you get any phone calls or text messages from people like that? I want to hear all about it. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. To all those guys out there that are that are knocking these broads up and, and telling them that they love them and, and all of that, you know, these girls don't love you. These girls love the wallet. These girls don't want to have your baby. These girls want to have job security. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> The Tom Likas Show from New York City. Uh, the city of the sore winners. That's right. They just can't shut up about it. Let's go to your calls. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? This is Joe. Uh, it's amazing. I uh, just want to touch a little bit on the topic that you're talking about right now. I have a few cousins that <clears throat> they... Uh, they want to be so bad part of a winning team that they can't do it by themselves, so they have to join something. And they always call like, oh, well, we, we're we Laker fans, and we are we, as they're part of the organization where when they're really not part of that, they just, they're, they're so lazy, they don't, want to, they don't want to win for themselves, so they have to be associated with something else. These are the same people, by the way. Let's talk about the Lakers for a second. These are the same people who last season, when the Lakers stunk, uh, they had nothing to say about the Lakers. They probably weren't even watching. You're right. You're right. And uh, that's just it's just something that just drives me nuts. Uh, They're they're still living at home with their parents. These are 25, 26 year old cousins that I have, and they just want to be a part of a winning team that they can go out there and win for themselves. There, I mean, I have a pretty decent job. I, I you know, I, I make pretty good money. I'm just about in virtue of opening up my my own company, and I'm winning for myself. I don't want to go and, uh, you know, I want to leave my dream. I don't want to go and pay tickets to have Kobe live his dreams. You know. <clears throat> I agree with you. So it's just uh, I don't know. It's just a little little comment that I had. Uh, I just thought it was the perfect time to to bring that up to you. But anyway, pull me up. All right, Joe, here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Let's go to Ben on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how you doing, buddy? Doing okay, Ben. I had to give you a call. Um, I got the text message yesterday from an ex-girlfriend, actually. It said, Giant is your, is, cool. is yeah, your, your ex-girlfriend from New York? Uh, she's from Pennsylvania. All right. And so, yeah, I got it. I was expecting it. I told my friends, uh, I said, I do not want New York to win because I'm going to get the text. I know I will. And lo and behold, I got it. So, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know how you're in New York right now. I cannot survive being around those people after a Super Bowl. Well, I, I, was, I was here to, to watch the Super Bowl with my brother and my nephew, and that's what I did. I cannot imagine. But, but no, here's are. what you can't imagine, walking down the street, Watching television or listening to the radio, it's insufferable. The game's over, folks. Shut yep. up. Shut up. And then, yeah, it's funny how they all want to, uh, they're all calling for UA and Coughlin said, and now, of course, they love them. They're the heroes. Yeah, these are all the people who wanted Tom Coughlin fired. 
yep. just a few weeks ago. Yeah, so they want Eli uh, Manning traded. It's, uh, it's whatever's convenient for him. So, I mean, I'm a huge sports fan. I don't. Even, I watch the Super Bowl by myself this year because people watch it. They put on the big front like they're big football fans, and I mean, it's, it's just annoying. Yeah, they're, they're Tostito fans. Yep, you know it. I mean, I got this. You know what I, team? I, that, you know what? You know what team they're a fan of? The Buffalo Wings. What's that? The team they're 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 rooting for is the Buffalo Wings. Yeah, right, exactly. They yes, you know that team, the, the Buffalo Hot Wings. What league are they in? <laughs> What's that? What league are the Buffalo Hot Wings in? Who do they play for? Uh, the question. National Restaurant Association, I think. The NRA. Well, uh, thank you for that. Well, we ran into, yes, thank you. Uh, one of those uh, pregnant pauses here that we uh, we really don't need. You know the kind when the guy has shot his wad on the air, and now he just sits there quietly waiting for me to lead him to his next pithy thought? No. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here comes Jeff on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? First time, long time. Doing okay. Great. Hey, listen, as the token New Yorker that moved west, within 10 seconds of that game ending, my by the way, by the way, I should point out it took Jeff 13 seconds to tell us he's a New Yorker. <laughs> My phone started ringing, Tom, and on the other end of the line... If Jeff was from Hasbro Heights, New Jersey, he never would have mentioned it, but he's a New Yorker, and he had to get it in in the first 13 seconds of the call, yep. implying somehow that we care, which we don't. Go ahead. Okay, but the phone started ringing, and sure enough, you were right, Tom. The drunken maroons on the other end of the phone started going wild telling me, we won the game! It was just pitiful. And it's exactly why I left. I can't take New York anymore. I'm so happy I live out here in the West. Oh, see, you're like me. You're like me. I, I left New York uh, 26, 27 years ago now. Oh, and I have no regrets. Every time I fly back into LaGuardia and walk around, it's an instant flashback to why exactly I got out of there. It's horrible. Everything good is ruined back there. You know, they're overrun with people to the point where anything that's good gets destroyed in 10 seconds. By the way, here's something Here's something else idiotic I heard on the news here last night. They were talking about this being the first New York title since uh, the New York Yankees won in 2000. And then they said, well, the New Jersey Devils won the Stanley Cup, but that doesn't count. <laughs> well, wait a minute. The New York Giants play in New Jersey. They don't even play in New York. Why Why wouldn't the New Jersey Devils winning the Stanley Cup count? Yeah, no, that would absolutely count, wouldn't you think? And, and hopefully they kick the... The New Jersey court. Devils played about 100 yards from the New York Giants. I don't understand. Yeah, it's the same complex. It's over there at the Giants Stadium in the Middle East. It, 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 why wouldn't it count? Stupid, 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 because the city is just full of yutzes and big mouths and experts on everything. Loud mouths were just annoying, and they can't shut up. Oh, yeah, you get Mr. Tony Baloney reporting from, uh, you know, Paramus, New Jersey, about the game. Yeah, enough of those guys. Uh, yeah. I'm staying out here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey, you. Well, Jeff, up, Jeff, by the way, Jeff calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Yeah, blow me up, Tom. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Speaking of Portland, let's go to Troy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? The All right. How you doing? Okay. The first thing I wanted to ask is, since I'm from Oregon, I've been a listener for about a year now, what does other white meat mean? The other white meat? Well, pork is the other white meat. So if you live in Portland, it's the home of the other white meat. I gotcha. Good, good, good thing I'm not running NASA. But anyway, I, I yeah, that's right. Con- <laughs> I believe in your concepts of like us 101. I absolutely love them. I got married when I was 35 years old. You said you shouldn't have a girlfriend until 25. I vaguely d- disagree on that. I just think she should be at least 35. Don't get oh, no, I, that's a minimum. I Frankly, I don't think you need a girlfriend or a wife. <clears throat> oh, yeah, but I decided to when I was 35, and I'm very, very happy. I make decent money and everything. And I'm, I have a child and that one on the way. 
Life couldn't be better for me. But anyway. Well, we'll see if that's true if you ever get divorced. Well, that, I don't see that happening, but as you say. And then the matriarchal, and then the the matriarchal Society of Oregon comes down on you. The, the Wiccans who run the state of Oregon start coming down on you and tell you how much you're going to have to pay. And we'll see how right, happy well, you that'll are. That'll be a hassle, but hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully but I do it believe doesn't. that in your concept that one in two marriages get a divorce, which is totally true. Right. And I'm hoping I'm not one of them. But See that guy next door who's still married? You know who that leaves? You. <laughs> yeah. But the reason I'm calling is, why are you complaining so much about the way people react? Because I'm here in New York having to listen to it. I know, but that's the way those are, that's the way they are. So you, shouldn't you accept people for who they are? Uh, no, I don't have to accept people for who they are. I mean, I'm certainly not hitting them over the head or shooting them, like the guy who shot those women at the Lane Bryant in Chicago. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm merely. I, they they express their opinion. Hey, we won. The Giants won. Uh, they're doing that, and I'm expressing my opinion about them. Okay. Well, fair enough. I. I understand that. It just seems like you were just in the first... These are the people who were endangering your lives on the way home from Hooters last night, okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, yeah, they were... But what about the people in the background of the uh, news broadcasters? They're having fun. You're saying they're all drunk, but not necessarily. They're all Oh, come on. What, What do people do when they go to a bar? Why are they watching the Super Bowl at a bar if not to get drunk? Would you agree that some people like to go to a bar to watch a Super Bowl game and not drink? No, no. You don't believe, you don't think like I why go to the trouble of driving to the bar? Why even do it? Well, because they wanted to be with their friends. Um, if they're friends, they'll be at your home. They don't need to meet you at the bar. But maybe that's where they wanted to meet. You'll be at their home. How many people, honestly, and especially by the way, in the New York metropolitan area, ever been here, Troy? Uh, I grew up in San Jose, but I've never really been down there. Well, I know San Francisco, the bars are full of drunks, but but the difference between San Francisco drunks and New York drunks is that New York drunks are from New York, and they're loud, and they're insufferable. And they think they have an attitude? They don't think they have an attitude. They do have an attitude. Well, yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Wait. <laughs> yes. This is the center of the universe. And wherever it is that you live isn't as good as here. Right. Yeah, just ask them. And the fact that a privately owned corporation from New Jersey put 11 guys on the field last night and they beat the 11 guys from Foxborough, Massachusetts, for owned by another corporation, somehow right. that proves that New York is better than the rest of the country. And that's what they think. Which is what they always think. Well, if you ask in people from New England, Boston, Massachusetts, and all those places, they'll think they're better for, than people from New York. I Hey, uh, you know, the only people as delusional as New Yorkers are Bostonians who call their city the hub. Like, it's the hub of what? The hub of cranky, drunken, self-hating individuals? What is it the hub of? But I heard there's a lot of nice people there. Where did you hear that? From somebody from New England? Well, Boston is full of the nastiest, crankiest people on earth. Are you kidding me? They hate themselves. How can they have any respect for you? Well, I, I lived know. I lived for one year on Beacon Hill. Trust me, I know it from the inside out. Well, maybe they're nicer to tour- tourists. You know, people who are doing business with you are nice to you. But I'll tell you what, on St. Patrick's Day... When uh, plenty of nice young crew cut and Irish Catholic boys go down to the uh, St. Patrick's Day Braden Southie to beat up homosexuals, we'll see how nice you think it is. Right. Well, of course, it's not nice to see anybody get beat up. Well, go to Boston sometime and see people getting beat up every night of the week. But it seems, it, going back to it, it just seems like you're really upset and it's a lot of anger toward these people. Well, I, again... I am spoiled by living on the West Coast. I am spoiled by being around people who have respect for each other. Spoiled by being European, around people. You say in Southern California has more respect for themselves than people from New York. Oh, like by all means, we in SoCal we love ourselves, and we really don't care if you like us or not. <laughs> well, that's true. That's we also was, we also don't care Tennessee. if you think we're the center of the universe. We don't even care if we're not the center of the universe. We don't care. 
And I was wondering if I can try and coin a phrase for Oregonians. It's called OBBD, Organ Big Butt Disease, because you talk about that a lot. That's why we call it Portland. Well, like I said, maybe I can coin the phrase of OBDD, OBBD, Organ Big Butt Disease, because it, it is up here and it happens a lot. I, these- I've, see, I've seen it firsthand. Uh, this is Jill on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jill. Um, I watched the game with both my parents. My dad's from the Bronx. My mom's from Jersey. They think they know more than the coaches. It's going crazy. The second the game's over, both of them are on the phone on either side of me for a half an hour each, calling all across the country, going crazy. Last time the Giants won, my dad broke my aunt's ribs. So. <laughs> Your dad broke your aunt's ribs? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the uh, maybe the Patriots ought to sign him. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. And yeah. uh, you didn't inherit any of this attitude living in Orange County, did you? <laughs> I, I inherited a little bit of it, but not to that extreme. You are aware in SoCal, nobody cares if you're from New York. They couldn't care less, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm from L.A., so... People love telling you they're from New York. They love uh, telling you that. Yeah, like like you're immediately dad. going to be impressed with the quality of their character. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, well, I'm so oh, well, I'm so glad that uh, you refined individuals have come to the jungle to uh, to to bring culture to the masses. Ooga booga, thank you. <laughs> Trying to talk to Absolutely. you with this bone in my nose. Huh? <laughs> well, thanks, Tom. Can you blow me up? I can blow you up. Yes, indeed, I can. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Uh, I mean, let me give you an example of the attitude here, okay? Bank of America has a slogan. I don't know if they're still using it now, but they've used it for some time. Bank of America has a slogan. It says, higher standards. Have you ever seen that? They have it at Dodger Stadium. They have it on their uh, billboards. They have it uh, on some of their promotional materials at the bank. Bank of America, higher standards. Do you know what the billboards in New York for Bank of America say? Higher standards even by New York standards. Implying somehow that the standards in New York are so much higher than the rest of the country. This is the city where the KFC was overrun by rats late at night. The subways are like one big long urinal. And all these idiotic drunken yutzes call radio stations and in this uh, just uh, unlistenable diatribe of baloney and and uh, illiteracy. It, it's it, it's mind boggling. I walked in here. I, I've been listening to it all day and it has just been driving me crazy. Now, the New York Giants won Super Bowl 42, and it was a great game. And, uh, you know, again, it was very enjoyable to watch. I'm not going to deny that. I enjoyed it. Because, by the way, I have no love lost. Uh, you know, the, uh, who is more insufferable, New York fans, New England fans? I don't know. It's a toss-up. But my brother enjoyed seeing the Giants win. He's a Giant fan, and my nephew enjoyed seeing the Giants win. So that was good. Good. But you know what? None of you guys had anything to do with it. I'm wondering if anybody out there had to listen to the insufferable New Yorkers who are the worst winners in the world. If you had to listen to them in any way, shape, or form, whether it be on the phone or through text messaging or see them on TV, please let me know. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You'll be glad to know when I did the DTB email I got from my girl said, and if I hear the name Tom Likas one more time, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show from New York City at 1-800-5800-TOM. I am uh, here in New York following Super Bowl 42, a great game. Now have you live among the biggest sore losers or sore winners. Actually, they're both the biggest sore losers and sore winners in the world. New Yorkers. Oh, my. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Joseph on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much. 
so it seems like you're really pissed off at New York. I mean, you were from New York, and it just uh, seems like, you know, I mean, they have all the headquarters of everything. I mean, the market. All the headquarters I mean, of everything? I mean, I'll say the majority of, I mean, the flagship stores of, of all types of, uh, of all types of, uh, uh, you know, fashion brands. You got, name, uh, name you them. Know, you got, uh, what, uh, you go, just don't go, go down uh, Fifth Avenue. You see, name all, them. I'm sorry? Name them. The flagship stores? You got, uh, Diesel. That's uh that's what they have a flagship store there. Um Saks of Fifth Ave, that's a flagship store and there's all Saks those Fifth those Avenue is not a designer of anything. Well, it's still it's, a, it's still a flagship store. That's where it's It's a started. department store. Okay. Well, the department stores too. I mean, you have uh headquarters of all types of uh companies. Diesel is not a designer either. Well, I'm saying I'm that's just I'm using that as an example. Uh, they you have just most, said the flagship stores of all the designers. Name them. Most designers. I mean, most designers. You, no, I mean, it's not, but it's not true. Who? No, Versace? I'm not a, uh, fashion guru, either. Who? No, Versace? No, Gucci? 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 Oh. Chanel? Fendi? Who? Okay. Let, let me ask you a question. Where's the big. I asked. Uh, no, no. No, I'm not going to let. No, no, I'm not going to let. I am not going to let you control this conversation. You will answer my questions. Okay. Well, Which designers? Gucci? What? Gucci, no. Gucci's in... Uh, Fendi? Um, you said all the major designers are based in New York. Well, okay. Gucci? Fendi? Major, uh, most, How about most Fendi? How about most Fendi? Fendi? No, most of them. How about no, Fendi? Not Fendi. Uh, about, all them. right. How about Chanel? Chanel? Let's, say, let's put it this way. There's more flagship stores in New York than anywhere Name in the world. one. Name a designer who's based in New York. Chanel? I'm not in the fashion industry. Why? How am I? So then, then, if you're not in the fashion industry, you're not in a position to make a comment like that. But it's obvious. It's no, it isn't. The, the it isn't obvious, world, especially to somebody fashion. who doesn't know. Especially to someone who just admitted to knowing nothing about the fashion industry. It is not obvious. It is. You you, you could ask anyone. That's that's. The, I'm asking that's you to industry. tell me the designers who are based in New York, and you can't even name one. Well, Calvin Klein. How about Calvin Klein? What about you, Calvin Klein, who who makes men's T-shirts in Singapore and sells them for twelve dollars a piece? Well, it's still a flagship store there. That's the. That's, who that's cares? Question. What does that prove? I mean, he'll figure. Any American brand, Don and Karen. Any American brand is that so? All American brands are based in uh, Los Angeles, uh, in New York. Is that right? Every American brand. Most How about people, Levi I Strauss? Say, I, would say, I would say the majority. Levi Strauss. I don't know if they, where they're located, but I, I would say... Is it New York? The fashion industry. Is it New York? Levi Strauss? I don't know. I'm not in the fashion industry. Who sells more jeans than Levi Strauss? I have no idea. I'm not in the fashion industry. Tom. Then don't bring it up. But I'm saying the majority of... All no, you don't know that because you know nothing about the fashion industry. You just admitted it, so don't say it. But, okay, what about... You everybody? don't know. Okay, I got a question. Is it... Are you mad at New York because maybe you weren't successful in the radio industry there? I am not mad at New York at all. I think you are. You always, anytime you get a chance, is the one city you have to pick on the most is New York. And New York, you know New York. If, and by the way, York, I didn't like, fail in the radio the industry friend. in New York. I, I never had a full-time job on the radio in New York. I was very young when I lived in New York. Picking, picking on New York is like picking on the planet because every single walk of life is in New York. So every, every single walk United of life is in L.A. too. Country. So what? So it's like picking on the whole entire world. No, it's not. It really isn't. Because New Yorkers, New York is a city, it's its own thing, with a bunch of yutzes and putzes, a bunch of drunken, loudmouths who, who are, by the way, all you have to do is sit here and watch television or listen to the radio and see what's here. Okay, so you're, you're, you're pissed off at New Yorkers for celebrating the street. What I, no, what I am pissed off. I am pissed off because, number one, they think this is the center of the universe. It isn't. Number two, because because they are sore winners. All right, the Giants won the Super Bowl. They don't even play in New York. Who cares? Move on. Everyone wants to be part 
of... That's because their own lives, in their own lives, they're such miserable failures. The people who want to be part of it, in their own lives, they're such miserable failures. The only way they can they can feel like anything is to wear a giant uniform and go around and go, yeah, we did it, we did it. What city has won more rings in any sport than New York? What well, does that we prove? Have, we have so many rings. So we have What does that prove? Proud and loud about it. I what mean, does that just, prove? What does that prove? What teams did you What sports. teams did you play on, pal? I played baseball. I, I what mean, What teams that won a ring in New York oh, did you okay, play for? I didn't play anything, but that's part of the sport. That's so right. So you won nothing. So they win. So they win. You win. won the nothing. Oh, you won to, nothing. That was great and then just You like, uh, won nothing. We're supposed to wave at each other. Hey, that was a great You game. won nothing. Yeah, we said high five. It's, it's, it's an you won nothing. With that, I watched the opera. By the way, the New York Giants don't even play in New York. Yeah, I never understood that either. So, I mean, that's nothing I don't... I so don't it is not an accomplishment for anybody in the five boroughs of New York City. It's not. I, you know, that's where we're in agreement. I don't believe that either. I lived in New Jersey for a while, and I was... And that pissed me off. I, I don't know why they, they they're in the same facility as the Devils. And the, there is one football team in New York State, the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, well, that, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's the only thing. That's the only. That's the only. Football yeah. Team. So don't be claiming credit for this. No, but it's still if you're in the tri-state area, that's that you claim your team. <laughs> Again, it proves nothing. It proves nothing except one team spent the most money, or in the case of the New York Yankees, they've been spending the most money for years. When's the last World Series they won, by the way? Uh, let me ask you. What, what was well, the last wait, 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 wait. When was the last World Series the New York Yankees won? 2000. Yeah. It's eight years ago. Right, but we still have 26 rings. New York Come Mets. On. New York Mets. Uh, when was the, New York Mets. That. When was the last time? 86. You, by the way, you don't have any rings at all. It doesn't matter, but you're you're when you're a fan. That's you're my a, point. You know, if Yogi Berra wants to brag well, about having game. played on the New York Yankees, fantastic. But you have no right to claim any credit for it at all. But why be? Why even watch the game if you're not going to get excited about it? That's that's part of the. Whole you, game. All right, when the game is over, move on. Game over. Yeah, but we cheer about it. I mean, it hasn't even been game over. Hours. Now shut up, <laughs> Tom. I still love you. As well you should. Jesus. <laughs> Take care, oh. Tom. Yeah, you too. Holy cow. This is Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing okay. Tom, I'm in full agreement with you about this New York obnoxious fan attitude. I mean, they think they're the claim to, to the universe. I, I got the privilege to uh, work there for about three weeks on the streets and got to see the real part in New York and the... The fans and the action and and the, and just they they think everything revolves around them. It's just unbelievable. And they think the rest of us are impressed with the fact that they're from New York. Uh, you know, every time I meet one, I, I go to golf events. I'm an outside sales rep for an actual New York company, and they come out here, and and I just they just think that you know, personally, I don't think they can accept the fact, in my opinion, that. The money, the shift of the economy has gone to the West Coast, and so if everybody else has moved out here, that they think they got a stranglehold on it, and they think they're the mecca of, of the United States now, when I, I personally think that Southern California is the best place to live in the world. Well, I put my money where my mouth is. I now own two houses in Southern California. Well, you're a smart man. I mean, uh, it's just that when when you deal with a New Yorker, they're they're right about everything, but have no knowledge on anything. And that it is not an accident. The rest of the country hates New York, and it's not because they're jealous of New York, which is a typical New York explanation for these things. Oh yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, they they think that, like I said, they they're right about everything, but they for four months of the year they're living in snow, four months of the year they're living in ungodly heat, and four months of the year. Barely any weather-wise, they come out of there. I mean, they live like caged animals when they have to come out of their 40-story, two-bedroom uh, places that they live. Looks like the projects half the time when you walk around that place. I think you're right. Oh, it's they, they come out like little. That's what when I was amazed when I went there. I mean, my friends used to say, "Oh, I used to think, oh, I want to go to New York and check it out, check it out." And and my wife wants to go there. 
but all they, they can glamorize is Manhattan, and that's all they... Makes me sick! Thanks for the call. The Tom Likas Show.